and welcome to this virtual production vlog. My name is Matt Workman, and today we're gonna to be talking about the best indie virtual production camera. Now, I take that with a grain of salt. Every job is different. Everyone has different parameters for their projects, but I guess I'll talk about why I think this camera is the best indie virtual production camera for me. So we're gonna go over some of the features, uh, why I chose this camera, how I set it up, what my plans are for in the future, and we'll do a little demo as well of how far I've gotten with uh, setting it up in Unreal Engine. So for those of you that don't know, this camera is made by a company called Blackmagic Design. That same company makes the capture card for my computer and they also currently make DaVinci Resolve and a whole bunch of other things. It's a pretty cool company and this camera is relatively new. Uh, the model is the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2, Generation 2. So this is like the second version of it. And the body of it is about $6,000 US, which is relatively affordable compared to other cinema cameras with similar on paper specs. So why did I choose this camera? I've never used it before. I was gonna rent it, but I'm in too much of a rush now. Things are moving kind of quickly. Uh, I just went out and bought it. But why did I buy this camera sight unseen? Well, the first reason is that there's a pretty big company that I work with pretty closely. I don't know if I can say their name directly, uh, but they do a lot of virtual production and the resulting content they make with it is seen by many, many millions of people. And the camera that they use when they could pretty much buy anything is this camera. That's number one. There's also other uh, indie virtual production people who I'll talk about later in this video that they're also using this camera. So basically I knew that there was already virtual production at a high level and an indie level going on with this exact camera. That was pretty much good enough for me. The second reason uh, I'll go through are just some of the features. So first of all, the image quality that comes out of this is really nice. You can go up to 4K, 16 by nine, you can do 1080. And those are the two formats I'm looking to do. And the main feature that I'm looking for for this workflow, spin this bad boy around, is HD SDI coming out of this. Now I call it HD SDI out of habit. Uh, I believe it's now called 12G SDI that comes out of this and that's pretty unique for this camera. That's like a really fast new SDI protocol. I'll be completely honest, I don't know that much about SDI. Uh, when I was a professional DP, I would say HD SDI and everyone knew what I meant. Now I guess there's a lot more versions of it. I need to kind of catch up in my knowledge. Uh, but this one has the kind of like latest and greatest really fast HD SDI protocol. I guess it's just called SDI. And this camera also generates time code and it allows us to gen lock, which we'll, sh which we'll see in Unreal Engine. We can gen lock Unreal Engine to this camera with this port here. That's crucial. That's a really big part of this. Uh, I'll be looking to put together a list of other cameras that this uh, is possible with, but it's not possible in every camera. Uh, someone in our virtual production Facebook group said that the Panasonic EVA 1, I believe, was not able to do genlock in the engine. We'll see what that means in a little bit. But uh, really good image, 4K, 1080, SDI out of here, newest format. Uh, and what else about it? Uh, for me, those are really the main things. Uh, the second thing I wanna point out on this camera before we move on is the little arm here. So this arm is made by Small Rig. I'll link to it in the description below. I forget the name of it currently. But it allows me to obviously get the Vive Tracker right here where I want it, which is basically in line with the uh, with the lens, right? So it's pretty much right in the middle of the lens. And then I push it out a little bit further in front of it. And this depends on how you set up your base stations. Basically, you wanna put this so that the base stations can see it uh, at all times if possible. If you put it too low or you put it somewhere your body's gonna block it or in the back, uh, sometimes you just get occlusion. They just can't see it. If you want like this, tracking stops working, right? So I wanna get it up and out and on the virtual production shoots that I've been on, this is where we put it as well. So I'm just trying to recreate that. This arm is really affordable and it's super tanky. So once you lock it like this, it's not really gonna go anywhere. So uh, I'll talk about what I've been doing for the last couple days and that's been trying to get this to work in our mixed reality, not really simulcam, but when you basically put a real object, uh, that llama, into a CG background and then move the camera and have it all sync together, whatever that's called, mixed reality. Uh, so there's a couple things that I've learned along the way that I didn't know before when I shot the last demo and I'm gonna share those with you right now in case you're kind of following along. Uh, quick disclaimer though, uh, I am not an expert in this. I've shot lots of jobs as a DP 
uh, with virtual production, but I've never been the person to actually set it up. So actually setting it up, uh, I'm learning an awful lot and I'll link to some of those resources uh, down below that you should be following if you wanna do that as well. But, so I got the camera, turned it on. The first thing I did was plug it into the Decklink AK Pro and try it in OBS. The video signal worked great. Then I got it into Unreal Engine with the media framework and composure. Uh, worked great there as well. The C300 took me a couple hours to figure out. This took me one minute. It was like, change the settings, worked perfectly. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to do was put the Vive Tracker on it and then track simultaneously uh, the position of this camera and apply that to the virtual camera and try to align them together. And that's where all the nuance happens. Now, I'm not gonna talk about profiling lenses. That's gonna come in the future uh, when I get peel lenses because uh, profiling these kind of uh, still zooms, not really gonna work out too well at all. Zooms in, in general are hard to profile. Uh, still zooms, probably impossible uh, in many cases. But what I'll talk about is some of the video things that I've learned uh, in the last day or two to make this all sync together as good as it possibly can with this type of lens. So the first thing you need to do, and a lot of people have picked up on this kind of intuitively, intuitively is account for the fact that the sensor is up here, but the, the, where the lens or the optical center, like where the actual virtual camera should be is somewhere like here, you might think, right? And this is close enough, like somewhere like along the lens center, maybe at the sensor plane. That's where I usually calibrate it to. So I basically take my metric tape measure and I measure down to the middle of the lens and I measure back to about the film plane and I have a transform that essentially moves uh, the tracking data that's coming in from this and it just moves it down back to essentially the center of the film sensor. Now, that is not exactly where it should go but I do not have the hardware or software to put it where it really should be. So this is good enough for me now. So that's one of the first things is this offset from where the tracker is happening. And the second thing is actually getting the Unreal Engine render CG background to perfectly sync with the camera footage, right? So this is why I couldn't do this with the C300. I had to wait for this camera to do this testing. What we have to do is called gen locking Unreal Engine to the timecode of this camera. So picture that this camera is shooting out a video frame every uh, 24 times a second, right? And it's got this cadence. And what you have to do is get Unreal Engine to shoot out Unreal Engine frames at the exact same time or else they mismatch and you'll get stuttering. And that's what I actually had happen when I first tested this. And I sent it to the Facebook group, which I like, linked to down below. And I was like, hey, why does my footage look so stuttery? And everyone who's been doing this a lot longer than me, they were like, you need to genlock Unreal Engine. So to do that, you basically get the timecode plugin, and then you have to install a couple other plugins from Blackmagic, and I'll link to the official documentation that I followed to do that. But you basically tell Unreal Engine to, hey, listen to the input from the Decklink AK Pro. Uh, if there's the correct Genlock timecode coming from that, sync your rendering to the timecode coming from the camera. And basically now, Unreal Engine is rendering at the same exact time as the camera is putting out frames. And now, if you look at the end results, it's much smoother and synced together. Now, if you look at some of this quick test footage that I put there, you'll see that there's like a little bit of a mismatch. Like say this is the, the uh, virtual camera, this is the real camera. You'll see that there's, uh, if they both start panning, this one will take off first, and then this one, and then when this one stops, this one goes after, so there's like a delay, so it's like, like that. It's going like this, right? And that's because the Vive is actually, has some issues, but uh, it's actually capturing data really quickly. I think it's like 90 hertz, and this is a little bit slower coming through uh, the STI port. So you actually have to delay the signal coming from this one to sync it up with this one. Now again, this is the indie budgety approach to this when you're working with higher end Tracking systems like NCAM, MOSIS, Stipe. I need to make like an acronym that puts all those together so I don't have to say that over and over again. Uh, when you work with systems like that, there's actually time code coming from the, sent from the uh, tracking data. And so the time code from the camera, from Unreal Engine, from the tracking data, they all just time code together and it's a beautiful thing and everything syncs. With the Vive, that's one of the uh, current main limitations. There are some possible workarounds coming from Unreal Engine itself. Uh, we've heard, so that will be pretty cool when Unreal Engine es essentially uh, directly supports the Vive. I've heard that's coming in the future, so very exciting. Uh, but for now, what we do, because we can't like time code sync them, uh, we basically just delay them 
in milliseconds, or in this case, in frames. So once Unreal Engine and the camera are firing at the same time, you can basically eyeball it and be like, hey, that's X amount of frames off the delay, and you just like two frames, three frames, one frame, you see what looks the best. Uh, I can show you the code for that. I did not write that myself. Uh, that's coming from another community member. I will link that in the uh, description below. I used his script. It works great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And now, when I pan the camera, the CG and the live action are pretty close. I think close enough for indie, definitely, for con to continue testing. So we have uh, everything more or less synced up. We've got the tracking data, we've got the camera, and we have Unreal Engine doing the CG backgrounds and eventually foregrounds, which we'll do in a, in a, in a future video. They're all synced up, firing as close together as is possible with our current tech. Uh, I think that with the Vive, it's going to get better and better. No promises. We'll see. Uh, but even with the kind of like hack together uh, system we have now, I think it looks really great. So with everything set up, let's go do a live demo. I'll go shoot uh, a little bit here, screen record it like I do, and just show uh, what the current quality is looking like coming out of this. I am recording the footage directly on the same computer. This is all a one computer setup, which keeps it pretty indie. Uh, this may start to scale into multiple computers, but we'll be staying uh, indie as long as we can before I start to have like some ridiculous equipment on this. So let's go do a live demo. So here is the latest iteration of the studio. We'll see that we have a green screen floor now. It's a little wrinkly, but key's okay. Uh, we're creating our ambient light with the Aperture 120D2 here. And we have another one over there going into the ceiling. So it makes a big soft source overhead, some nice soft ambient light. This is a good approach generally to start when you're lighting uh, a small green screen like this. We also have the two uh, LS1 halves hitting the screen directly to give it uh, a little bit more exposure out there. And we're pretty much evenly at a 5.6 right there. Even up, it's like a 6.3, yeah. So we're basically a 5.6 if you point it straight at the camera. Right, 5.6 here. Uh, not that it really matters back here. A little bit more. What are we getting back on the screen? A little bit more, so we're a little over. But it's, a, it's essentially, I would say, a 5.6 maybe a little bit more but in general we're basically a 5.6 uh, in this entire area 5.6 maybe in a half and we're shooting at a four on the uh on this lens right there it's kind of like a canon consumer zoom lens there uh but we're doing okay so not an awkward angle at all anyway we have the black magic camera set up into Unreal Engine, we have everything syncing, so I thought this would be a cool point of view, so I'm gonna just operate a couple of shots, and then hop over to Unreal, change some stuff, operate a couple of shots, you know how we do, so I'm gonna jump on this thing. So there's the edge of the green screen, obviously, and as I pan in here, you can see that everything's pretty much synced up. That's, that's as good as we've gotten it so far. Uh, not the best operating in the world, but you know, you can see. All right, so I'll give it a, give it a bit of a whip pan like this, Right, so is it perfectly together? Maybe not perfectly, right? Motion blur can definitely mess with it, but if you're doing like smooth camera moves like this, uh, it works out pretty well. So that was some panning around, and there's like the soldier running around in the background, so I don't like where he is, but what I'm gonna go do now is move him in Unreal Engine, and then shoot another take. So this is kind of like the cool part of live comping, is you can go dress the real set and dress the virtual set all real time at the same time. Usually more than one person, but hey, I'm gonna do it as one person. Okay, so I'm at the computer now, and I'm going to put the full view of the comp away. You can see that this is uh, live running right now, you can see the time code at the top here. So I am going to grab this guy here. Uh, I wish I could see the comp, hold on. I'm going to keep the comp, there it is. I'm gonna pin it like that, grab the dude, and I can look, there we go. Not that this makes any sense, but you know, yeah, he's just running on like nothing, but you can't really tell. I guess I could go like this. Not that this scene makes any sense, but still something's telling me like, hey, let's put that dude here. Just looks cooler. And I'm actually going to tweak the sun, too, because this is where the sun ended up after, like, me, like, kind of messing around last time. And I don't like it very much, so let's spin this thing. 
Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, kind of want to separate that guy. There we go. That's that's kind of nice. So let's see how this looks. Change the lighting a little bit and uh, move some actors around. Okay, so now you've seen how the scene is actually live back there. I moved some people around. The scene doesn't make any sense, but hey, uh, I think it still kind of looks cool. And I changed some of the virtual lighting. Uh, I should really do more lighting on the foreground, but this is still a demo here, so I'll, I'll move the camera a little bit. So I'm just going to do a slow pan left to right, like this. And uh, things are looking pretty good. We're off the screen now. Uh, if I do moves like this, where I stop, and I start, and I stop, and I start, you can see that things are synced pretty well, considering that the Vive doesn't currently have timecode or any real synced mechanism, but we're doing a pretty good job delaying it. Uh, above, the key is not going to work out too well. I'd have to adjust how the key is working. But overall, uh, the progress is pretty good with the virtual production studio here. The Blackmagic camera really kind of like completes a big missing component from before. And I'm going to keep pushing on and trying to make cooler and cooler things with this. Okay, so we're, we're, while we're still rolling, uh, I do not have the lens encoded, so if I go to something like a 70 mil here, I actually have to go adjust that on the computer now, too. So I'm on the computer here, and uh, again, I don't expect you to follow this just yet, but we're going to change the focal length here to 70. Is that what it was? So I'm going to measure the distance here in meters again uh, to the talent. Uh, eventually, you want to encode this kind of stuff so that if the lens changes focus on your lens, your nose, Right now, I do not have that set up, so we're about 140 centimeters. So, 140 centimeters there for the depth of field, and this should track pretty well. Let's check it out. So, I don't have the comp here, so I gotta kinda look at the monitor. Uh, I'll get a monitor over here soon enough. So that wraps it up for this vlog. We looked at the G2. We talked a little bit about syncing it with Unreal Engine and trying our best to sync it with the Vive Tracker. And we saw a little bit of mixed reality where we have a real object and a CG background and we move the camera and it all kind of like looks like it's working. Uh, moving on in the future, there's just so many topics and we actually have a lot of support for this vlog. Not that on YouTube, this is where we get most of our views. This is actually much more viewed on um, Instagram, LinkedIn's a big one, uh, Twitter, a lot of these clips have kind of blown up. But we, we have a lot of support and you know, I think it's definitely in scope that we'll be able to continue to scale my setup. Uh, I'm gonna be getting uh, better lenses fit for profile and we'll, we'll go over how to profile things. Um, we'll probably, hopefully be able to demo like the more high-end systems and I can show you the difference. Uh, even show you how they get set up just so that you can see them. There's not a lot of stuff out there, it's kind of high-end but uh, I think in the context of this series, that makes a lot of sense. And we're slowly going to push towards LED walls and projectors. Uh, it'll take a little while. I think there's a lot of groundwork to get done here uh, with just this setup here. But just know that it is a goal of this series to get to LED walls. And uh, I think we might get there. We just might get there. Uh, in the comments below, let me know if there's any questions you have. Uh, about this, anything that you want to see that's not clear. And if you want to continue the conversation, as they say, uh, I have a Facebook group on Facebook called Unreal Engine Virtual Production. And there's people from Epic Games. There's like a lot of seniors in the virtual production world, a lot of new people, and it's getting bigger. And there's just a lot of conversations. I basically post all my like work in progress stuff there and ask for help, <laughs> just like <laughs> begging for help. And there's also a Discord channel uh, run, run by Richard that's really good. I go in there and I also ask for help. And uh, you know, so if you're interested in following along, leave comments here and uh, go check out the YouTube videos below, Facebook group, and the Discord, all good stuff. I'll check you guys on the next video.